I think what sets this apart really is the, the scale of the study. It's uh, got 196,000 people in it, uh, which is quite unusual. It's certainly much larger than the studies that have looked at lifestyle factors and tried to look at genetics before. And the other thing which really makes this study stand out is that we were able to look at genetic risk far more comprehensively than had previously been done. So people had looked at the APOE E4 variant and stratified groups into whether you were a carrier or not. But what we've tried to do is by taking together almost a quarter of a million genetic variants and individually weighting each of those to produce a kind of overall genetic risk score for each individual is produce that kind of comprehensive insight into their background genetic risk, if you like. What we were most interested in is not really whether lifestyle factors are linked with your dementia risk or whether genetics are linked with your genetic risk. I mean, we, we would expect, we'd be worried really if lifestyle factors or genetics weren't linked with your genetic risk. It's really all about the interaction between the two. And I think that's what's novel about our study. For the first time, we're looking at if you stratify people in terms of their comprehensive genetic risk of dementia, do they still seem to have that association between lifestyle and a reduced risk of dementia? So the worst case scenario would be that people with high genetic risk of dementia don't seem to have a lower risk of dementia if they do all the right things. Um, that would be really disheartening from a public health perspective. And so I think the take home message is pretty clear. Um, it's really encouraging that even it amongst people with a very high genetic risk of dementia, lifestyle factors were associated with a reduced risk. Now it doesn't demonstrate, it's not a trial, so it doesn't demonstrate causality. We're not changing people's lifestyles and showing that we're reducing their individual risk of dementia. But it is really promising that uh, the public health strategies aimed at reducing rates of dementia, at reducing people's individual risks of dementia, may work even in those with a high genetic risk. And we didn't know that before, so I think that's a, a really useful piece of information. It also means that if you're doing trials, uh, you may be able to select people who are at high genetic risk and therefore more likely to develop dementia because of their background. Uh, but if you, you would expect the same potentially protective effect of lifestyle factors in that group. So you could enrich trials uh, using that kind of approach. So I think that, that's a really exciting opportunity for future research.